Just recently, I stood on the highest point in the park, and I looked westward. It is beautiful and quiet, and trees line the streets. And I'm so glad that they kept the name of the park in honor of a, a black man. It represents a link to the past. I think, I know that our footprints are there, are still there. Parks for Negroes Park Board has just acquired two parks for Negroes, one on the east and one on the west side of the river. They are the first public parks ever acquired for Negroes in Dallas. It is intended to make them attractive and inviting for the colored people. After the Civil War, our society was uh, integrated for a bit, just a bit, you know, and uh, uh, but after the Plessy versus Ferguson decision, which had separate but equal facilities for okay in public places, there was a movement to segregate places, saying they would be separate but equal, but of course they were not equal. Then that gave them legal ground to uh, segregate me until I was almost 40 years old. But there was nothing uh, socially uh, for the black community. Anything social in the black community at that time would have come out of the black church. And so uh, the leadership were pushing along with the NAACP to get facilities in the black community. Those were designated as Negro parks. The ordinance still permitted them to go to any park, and whites could go to those parks too, but they wanted, they sort of were interested in having their own parks so they could have some protection and something they could enjoy without having any uh, disagreements with white people. And so that sort of started the uh, African American uh, parks in Dallas. I was born on the corner of Thomas Avenue and Hall Street. The clinic was only one block from Griggs Park. So uh, I have been associated with Griggs Park all of my life. I grew up in the park system. Weekends and holidays and everything was spent on the parks. You know, that's where people went. We had children's programs. We had competitions. We used to have plays on the park. We had nice baseball diamonds. You know, the families would come out and put out blankets. And, you know, we had the holidays, and Juneteenth. And when the summer would begin, we had uh, guys who were like professional baseball players and professional football players. Well, when that season was over, they'd come home and, you know, they'd play with us on the park. We had uh, one of the most famous baseball players in the world, Ernie Banks, came off Griggs Park. Around 1940, 39 or 40, they built the first uh, public federal housing on Hall Street. And uh, this was an ideal playground for the many kids that were in the projects. Griggs Park was, was just in a community that was outstanding. There was strong pride, strong family ties, awareness of community. The corners of Thomason Hall, especially on weekends, were alive. On the northwest corner was the State Theater. Mm -hmm. And that's where we all went on the weekends. We went to the movies. And stayed all day. <laughs> <laughs> and around the movie there, you know, there were restaurants. 
you had the honky tonks, the uh, cab stands. Practically all the business in that whole area were owned by black people. So black folks had some, you know, they had the, the prestige and the privilege of really owning those business. There were some, some black people who were very well off, considered wealthy people. Black people were made aware that they should keep their place, but their place was a proud place. They stayed within uh, their communities, but they made those communities thrive. It was really a community, and unlike anything we have now or had since. There are young people from all races who have come to Dallas from different places that don't realize the historical significance of Uptown. You know, it's kind of like working in the present to save the past for the future. Sometimes we got to hold on to those old stories because those are the foundations that our heritage is based on.